Keep going with Box Advance and uh, happy to be joined with Graham G Train G Train McCormick. It's been a while since I've been chatting to you since last March, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, how's it been? been? Huh? How have you been? How have I been? Yeah. Good man, yeah, really good man. Really good. Um just living life, man, you know what I mean? Uh working, babies, you know, uh living living the everyday life, man. Um, making babies, <laughs> but look, things not a baby on the way. Um, so yeah, I've been good, bro. I've been really, really good, man. Um, back training a while now, back training properly. I kind of, I was kind of humming and hawing for a while what I was going to do, man. You know what I mean? Because I'm not fucking 25, you know what I mean? And obviously, uh, you know, with the, with the last year with the coronavirus and all, like, kind of to be honest with you, man, I was kind of thinking, will I bother, like, you know, because. Like, I'm very happy with what I've done in boxing and with the life I have now because of boxing, with my, with my job and stuff like that and with what, I, what I'm looking to do when I finish boxing, you know what I mean? So, like, boxing gave me that, you know what I mean? So, I'm very grateful for that. I'm also very proud of how far I have come as up to now. So, I, I was, I could have walked away, like, from it. And I've said this a couple of times, like, and I was really strongly thinking about just saying, look, fuck it, what's the point? Like, you know, I'm grateful I was given the opportunity to get to 5-0 and, and have some good entertaining fights and, you know... But there's always that thing inside of me, like, I didn't have any big fights, big Irish fights, you know, and, and I want those fights, Kieran, like, you know what I mean? And I, I deserve those fights, and, and I'm a good entertaining fighter, and I'll be in good entertaining fights, you know? So that was kind of always in the back of my mind, and I had a chat with my wife one day a couple of months ago. I kind of went back training maybe eight months ago and had a couple of spars up in Pete Taylor's and a couple of spars in Limerick, and I wasn't really enjoying it, man, and that's the truth. Like, I'll, I'll always be honest, like, I wasn't really enjoying the spar, and I wasn't really enjoying the training, and I was kind of like, oh, that's the fucking point, like, you know you know, I was very, very heavy. I knew the work I had to put in to get the weight back down and my fitness wasn't great. And I was kind of like, fuck, what's the point? I had a chat with my wife one in the kitchen. She was like, I'm like in, in five years time, you're going to be looking back like, and you're going to have regrets. Like, And I always said to myself that when I leave this game, I'm not going to have any regrets. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not going to leave and say, say to my son, like when he's 15, like, you know, oh, I wish I'd done this and I wish I'd done that. Like, so, like, I wasn't going to leave the game with regrets, man, you know. So I said, after having a chat with my wife, like, and in fairness, my wife really put it on me, like, and I kind of needed that, that chat at the time from someone that would be honest with me, like, you know what I mean? That would be, that would tell me straight up as it is, like, and, and, and I needed that conversation. And I kind of, since then, man, I kind of I kind of changed things around. I had a chat with my coach, Sean Kelly, who's also a very, very good friend of mine. Um, and we, and we, we laid out a plan. And we said, look, let's let's fucking go for it. You know, I just want to give a mention to my good mates, Anthony and Ross and Colin and all my friends around me, like my close friends, like loads of people know I'm forgetting, but they are they were all good to me. Like when I was thinking about genuinely not boxing again, like they all said, like, don't like, you know what I mean? You'll have regrets. And I'm very, very grateful I have good people around me, Karen, that were able to uh to have the kind of the chat I needed at the time. Um so yeah, look, man, I have the fire back in my belly, man. I'm back training hard the last five months. Yeah, four or five months back dieting. I'm down. I'm down a good bit of weight, man. I'm down like 15 kilos since I came back. I was fucking fat out, man. I was, <laughs> I was so fat, man. I wasn't doing it. I was like, people are like, oh, you're all, you know, I have the gym out the back, and like people are like, oh, I was training, but man, I only train for like when I when I'm not, not I'm only training for my head, man, for my mental health because being a recovering addict and that, like uh, and being as crazy as I am like my head can go fucking swanny out the window in two minutes man and fucking the train keeps my head intact man you know it keeps me kind of grounded and it keeps me focused so that was remember my training but when I got in it got it in my head that I wanted to fight again man I really I really kicked it in you know I started dieting again I started training again um, training properly again you know what I mean and, and I didn't go back to sparring straight away because I wanted to get the weight down and stuff but I knew obviously I was going to go back to Spain at some point. And then, you know, as the more I trained, the more opportunity and opportunity came away, which we'll talk about in a minute. And um, and I bit the fucking hand off it, like, you know what I mean? I was like, yeah, let's go, because I, I have that hunger in my belly again, okay? I'm like, I, I'm, I'm really, really focused. I'm really hungry. And I know I'm not getting any younger. I'm 34 in April, man. But I genuinely feel I have a good two years in me and I'm going to, I'm going to, get it, I'm going to give it the best possible... I'm going to give it the best I possibly can over the next two years, you know? Before I before I walk away from boxing, no, I'm not going to leave this game with any regrets. That's that's one thing I said that when I first turned pro, and I and I'm going to keep saying it now, like I'm not leaving this game with any regrets. If I had left now, I would have had massive regrets a couple of years down the line, you know. Um, I imagine that's yeah, you were put on to, to Andy, and that's how this came about. Yeah, yeah, that's how it came about, man. Um, 
talking to a friend of mine a couple of a while back, and and it, it had been said about it about a possible um, show being done across the states that maybe our followers might be on it. And my my friend Willow Mac, um, who who who's really had me up my box, and a very 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 good friend of mine, um, is very good friends with Andy O'Neill, and I know Andy myself, of course, through boxing and all. And and Willow was chatting to Andy, and it had come up in conversation about the show in America, um. And Willem said, look, is there any chance that you get Graham on it? And Andy said, yeah, of course, no problem. And then Andy had got, and myself and Andy were chatting, you know what I mean? And, and in fairness, big thanks to Andy and Neil for, for getting me to fight. He got on to the guy who was doing the show. And um, and it went from there, bud, you know. Um, but I'd, I would like to give a big shout to my friend Willem Mackley because, again, he's another friend that's very, very close to me and uh, and has helped me out a lot over the last kind of year, you know. Um well, yeah, I had heard about it a couple of weeks before from a friend of mine, a good friend of mine. I said something could be happening, something could be brewing, you know, maybe Irish guys on it. And I, it kind of went from there, you know. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm very grateful for that friend too um, to to have dropped it in my way, you know. Yeah. So, look, man, I'm delighted. I'm like, fucking amazing for me, like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. South Carolina, right? It's not North Carolina, it's South Carolina, isn't it? Charlotte, uh, Charlotte is North, North Carolina. Is it, yeah? Well, it's 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 March, yeah. It's the March show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The March show. Oh, I'm on the same show, like yeah. I'm on the same show as the Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I do know, I know they do have other shows. Um, yeah. which I actually thought when I heard originally that you're going to be fighting on the card, I, I fighting in on one of their shows. I actually thought it was going to be a later one because I know they had one in April. I think that was in South Carolina. So I actually thought it was that one originally, but. It's the March 27 one, which is on Saturday. Now, originally it was booked in a box rack for Friday, but I've heard that it's going to be moved to the Saturday, the 27th. Um, oh, that's, that's, yeah, that's cool. Um, so, yeah, North, North Carolina, yeah. But uh, is it just, was it more so for you just to get back out, to have a little trip abroad as well, all that? Man, yeah, look, man, this, this is a dream come true, man. Like, I'm, like... You know, I, I'm not one of these guys who's going to give the big sob story, and I never have been, and, I, and I've always been honest. Like, but this is a dream come true for me, man. Like, I went from fucking, from fucking sleeping under a fucking bridge to now going to have a fight in America, man. You know what I mean? Like, it's a dream come true for me. But I never thought I'd ever, I'd ever be able to go to America for anything. Now I get to go over and fight, do what I love in America, man. You know what I mean? So when the opportunity was passed to me, it was like, yeah, man, of course I want, I want to take that fight. You know what I mean? It was short, no, not short notice. Like I was already training. Obviously, I still have a good bit of weight to get down, but man, I, I I'm so used to dropping big weight in fights now. It's it's like it's like second nature to me, man. So I'm not worried about it in that sense. I knew I had I had a good team around me, you know what I mean, to get me ready and get me in shape and sparring, like you know what I mean. So I said, yeah, fuck it, let's go, like you know what I mean. So I'm fucking absolutely buzzing, man. I'm buzzing, like even knowing this interview, like it's great to be back doing interviews with yourself and mm. you know and 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 to be back involved in boxing again, like mm. and. and to be getting back in a ring, man. To be getting fought, to be fighting again, man. You know what I mean? I, I, I've made massive improvements, man, over the last six months. Massive improvements. My boxing has come on. Sean has let me. Sean has kind of allowed me to do what I enjoy doing, which is come forward and be aggressive and throw lots of punches. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And does not like. I'm not saying that no one ever didn't allow me to do that, but Eddie kind of wanted me more to box, which is which I understand why. Like you know what I mean? He wanted me to box and, and not get hit as much, but. Man, I, I find freedom in pain, man. You know what I mean? I, I enjoy it, man. You know, hit me 10 times, I'll keep coming forward. Like, you know what I mean? And I, I want to be in entertaining fights, man. I want to, I want, I want to be, all I want to be remembered for is being in good fights. And, and, and I'm back to that now. I'm back to, to, to that style, to that aggression, to that coming forward today. And I'm looking forward to, to Sean in, in March in America, what I'm about, you know? Mm-hmm. Have you been to America before? No man, but no. but I barely left Limerick. We stopped, yeah. Um, in terms of moving forward, like I see you have some marks there on your face. You've obviously been sparring quite a lot. Um, I see you sparring with people like Paddy Donovan and whatnot. So how's mm. how's uh, your camp per se been going? Brilliant, man. Can't like. I've obviously been training away myself, but I got back into proper camp about two weeks ago. My first spar back was Paddy. I gave him six rounds. And then we sparred again two days later myself, Paddy, Jason Harty, and Jamie Morrissey. And then myself and Paddy sparred again last night. Like, I mean, Paddy Donovan is one of the most exciting talents in the planet, man. He's so good. Like, you know, 
So like me, me back sparring him is bringing my confidence up because I know how good Paddy is. You know what I mean? Like so, and to be in there with him doing doing the rounds and, and getting good rounds in with him, man, I'm really I'm really enjoying it. Like look, the marks on my face, man. Like <laughs> they're never going to get out of a spar with Paddy. Paddy don't even without marks on your face, man. <laughs> you know he he he's just that fucking good. He, I don't think people realize how good he actually is, man. You know what I mean? He's just that good, like. I love I, I I'm not gonna like I love sparring, man, because you can only learn by sparring guys who are better than yourself. You know what I mean? By sparring guys that you I remember I remember when I first saw I, I listened to a lot of motivation speaking. I remember listening to this one guy and it, it always sticks to me and he said, I used to run and I used to be the fastest runner in my team, but I could never beat records and all. So to get faster, he had to run against guys who were faster than him and who were better than him. And he never won the race against the guys that he was running, but his time got better every time. Mm-hmm. So for you to get better, man, for me, or you for, to get better at anything, like I, I honestly feel you need to push yourself against the guys who are going to push it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Sparrow and Sparrow's going great. And of course, we have, we have a good thing going in Limerick, man. Myself, Paddy Donovan, Edward Donovan, obviously, uh, Jason Harty, the two boys are signed to Frank Warren. My friend Jamie Morris, he just signed to uh, Boxing Island Promotions, another good boxer coming out of Limerick as well. Um, you know, we're all training together, man. So it's a good buzz, man. It's great to be back in, it's great to be back around the camp, great to be back around the buzz of boxing again, man. Because you can train yourself in the bag all day, but it's nothing like a buzz of a camp and, and being in the gym with the boys and sparring and, 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 and all that stuff, you know? It's interesting you're talking about. Um... Your, your battle with, with addiction and how you've been in recovery and there's a few people that have, have had similar stories to you in that um, there's people who've said they're in recovery so it's even like Kenny Egan uh, Eric Donovan um, mm. your former former manager Stephen Sharp um, Ooh, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah there's, there's quite a few like that that are, are in recovery but um, your story like, how old what age were you when it, when it all kind of started oh man um like I, when I first started drinking and drugging, man, I was really young, you know what I mean? Like 13, 14. But like I've always said, like lucky enough for me, like I got involved in boxing as a 15-year-old teenager, like, you know what I mean? And it kind of kept me away from it for a couple of years and kept me, I really, I love boxing straight away. The minute I walked in the gym, I fell in love with boxing. So kind of kept me in line, you know? But I suppose things happened to me in life as I, got, as, as I went along and I got older and, and I turned to alcohol and drugs to... Um, to, to escape from life, you know what I mean? And and I suppose when I went to Australia, you know, a couple of things happened to me as a teenager and, and I lost a baby, young with a girl, you know, and, and stuff like that. And I didn't know how to deal with those emotions. I was very, very young. So again, obviously I turned to alcohol, drugs and, 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 and criminal activity and stuff like that. So my uncle was living in Australia and he said, look, it's time to get out of there. Like you need to get out of there. Like you need to get, to get over here and, and start to build a life yourself. And I suppose that, that was the plan, man. But unfortunately, man, you can move all over the world, but you can't get away from this. You know what I mean? And any any recovering addict will tell you that. Like, you can never get away from this. So I went to Australia and I became worse. You know what I mean? I, my, my drinking became worse. My, you know, I just became way worse over there. Like, you know what I'm saying? And and when I came home, man, that was when that was when it really started to get bad. You know, I met a girl. Had my first, had my first child. You know, I got back involved in criminal criminality. So I started selling drugs and fucking and all that stuff. And I like, like I've never, I've never really spoke about it too much because I don't do the whole Billy Big Balls thing and oh, I'm this and I was that and I was a brand new hat. I was a fucking agent. I was an absolute agent. But I was out of my mind on drugs and alcohol. I didn't know what the fuck was going on in life, man. I lived a very, very crazy life in my twenties, man. You know, I'm blessed. I have, I have beautiful children out of it and stuff like that. But man, my twenties was absolutely off the wall. Like, I know you hear some guys saying this and that, like, and I don't, I don't, I don't dilute it or water it down. Like, it was absolutely mental, man. I lived a fucking crazy life. Like, it went from bad to bad to absolutely terrible. Like, I remember when I, <clears throat> when I went to jail, I went to jail at 22 for, I think it was 12 months I got. And like, I came out of jail 50 times worse than what I went in. You know what I mean? Jail, jail is like fucking school for criminals like you know what I mean and mm. and I went in and I came out a lot worse and I came out with the big fucking chest out you know and the fucking attitude is fuck the system I give a fuck about nobody and I got worse mentally I got worse you know what I mean I wasn't always as crazy but the more I, I done in my life and, and the more shit I done and the more fucking crazy shit I done the crazier I got man you know what I mean and that's the truth the, the less fucking compassion I had for other people and like I give a fuck about nobody Ken. like I give a fuck about nobody I didn't give 
I didn't give a fuck about anyone. My 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 family, my kids, nobody. I didn't care, man. All I cared about was myself and getting drugs and, and and making money and thinking I was this fucking Tony Montana fell on television. Like, you know what I mean? That's that's all I cared about, man, was was how was how other people saw me, you know what I mean? Like and mm. being the big hard man and fucking and thinking I was fucking fucking living in the wild, wild west with guns and fucking you know, like crazy, crazy shit, but you know, crazy shit. There's some things I've done, but in my life that, that will haunt me for the rest of my life, and that's the truth. And I've never spoken with anyone and I never will. But like there's stuff that I'm lucky I have a God in my life today, and I'm lucky I have recovery in my life today and good people around me because it, it, it sometimes it keeps me up at night, man. You know what I mean? There's 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 stuff I've done absolutely fucking crazy stuff, but that that will never leave me. Like you know what I mean? But I've 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 learned through recovery and through God how to deal with those things that are moving forward in my life. You know what I mean? I have a very good life today, and I've worked very hard for the life I have today. Kian, like you know what I mean? I work very very hard, and <clears throat> when I look back in my life now, when I look back at at how crazy I was back then, man, it, it's it's daunting like to look at the life I have today do you know like getting up this morning giving my wife and, her, and my daughter the flowers and, and doing cards with my son last night like but like when I was younger like and I, and I had kids like that was none of that stuff was, was ever in my mind like you know I didn't give a fuck about any of the, any of them like, you know I, and it's it's that's that's the holy all of it like I gave a fuck about absolutely nobody I didn't care who I hurt you know and and it's it's good that I can look back now and and help other people that are in that situation. And that's what I try to do now with my boxing and what I try to do with my life is to help as many people as I can. If I can help them, I will. And if I can't, I can't. But I'm very, very grateful that I don't live that life anymore, Ken. Mm. That's that's the whole of it. It was a very, very dark, dark time. Mm. Very, very dark, dark place. And like I said to you a minute ago, there's times where I can go back there in my head like I'm an addict. I'm not. I'm, I, I, just because I have a good life there doesn't mean I'm perfect. There's days, man, where I... I, I think about suicide. I think about fucking going back drinking, going back taking drugs. I think about killing some fella down the street because he looked at me wrong. Do you know, like my head is off, is is and and there's is, is out the fucking window. Like you know what I mean? I'm I'm an absolutely I'm an absolute crazy bastard. Like and that's not me saying blowing myself up. Like it, there's days where I'm absolutely off the fucking wall. Like now ninety nine times out of ten I have good days, but man, I have absolutely terrible days, terrible days where I just don't want to get out of bed. I just don't want to talk to my wife. I don't want to see the kids. Where I just, you know, it's it's hard, man. It's it's. I'm fighting a battle every single day in my head. Every single day I fight a battle in my head every day mm-hmm. to 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 bring the to bring the good dog out of me and not the bad dog out of me. Because every human being has two dogs, and it's now it's who we feed in the morning. And it's who we feed going forward in life is what comes out. And <clears throat> all I fed back in the day was the bad dog. You know what I mean? It was the negative, <clears throat> bad fucking. Dog who 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 done what he fucking wanted and hurt who he wanted. I didn't care. Whereas now I do my best. I do my best on a daily basis mm. to not bring to not be that guy anymore. You know. Yeah. Um. You you kind of spoke about how you got involved in criminality, like selling drugs and all that. Was that more so to to kind of feed your habit? Was it more so alcohol or was it drugs as well? And was it to feed your habit? No, or man, or was it part of kind of your ego back then? Yeah, man, it's it's like like people don't like Limerick is a great city, and I I love Limerick, man. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna talk bad about my city, but like there's there's a kind of thing around Limerick, you know what I mean? Where where drugs is a big thing, and and selling drugs is a big thing, and and that's just the way it is, man. You know, like I'm not saying the people who are involved with this and that or anything like that, or, or wasn't anybody's fault because it was nobody's fault but my own, like you know what I mean? And I, and I would never say that like that was anyone else's fault, but. It was an ego thing. It was also, man, I seen all these older guys making loads of money, driving nice cars, you know, <clears throat> from selling drugs. Why the fuck wouldn't I do it? Like, you know what I mean? And then, like, after a while then, man, I got I got really badly hooked on drugs and and I just went really, really bad, man. You know what I mean? My drug dealing. Then I, then I was just selling drugs so I could feed my own habit. Like, you know what I mean? Mm. Make money on the side, man, of course. You know what I mean? And, and stuff like that, but... Mainly to feed my own fucking habit. Like, like I was, like, cocaine, like, took over my life, man. It mm. took over my life. Like, you know what I mean? It was an everyday thing, like, every day of the week. Like, I, I, I used to, like, this is how crazy I was. I used to go to the gym thinking I was making this massive comeback in amateur boxing. I was coming back boxing. Because I was boxing a long time, like, you know what I mean? So I always had, that, but I'm going to go back to boxing. <clears throat> and I remember I used to, my gear bag used to be in the corner of the gym. Big gym, no, like. And I used to run over to my gear bike, take a sniff of stuff, 
and run back to the bag, like, and punch the bag, like, that's how old my fucking mind I was, like, mm. you know what I mean, like, I fucking, thinking that that was normal, like, I only saw one, one thing in life, like, and that was my way, or fucking no way, and everybody else was wrong except me, you know, when really, it was me that was living the fucking deluded life, and absolutely wrong, obviously, of course, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, fucking craziness, like, you know, mm-hmm. and, but yeah, look, I mean, ego, money, drugs, that's that's what drives it. That's what drove it for me, like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The, the, you all kind of came to a head. You said that you became homeless. Um, when, yeah. When about did that happen? How long was it for? And kind of how, how did that come about? Um, I'm five years clean and sober. This may come coming. So the last day I drank and took drugs was nearly five years ago. I tried to commit suicide that day. I went down to the bridge, climbed over the York. Realistically, it was a cry for it was 50-50, cry for attention. Plus, I was thinking of doing it. Down the bridge, a, f- a fella seen me, ran down, kind of talked me from jumping in. He rang the guards, guards came down, um, and that was the last day I drank. And that was that, you know, something came over me that day. Um, and I got in, I got into treatment a few weeks later. I started to go into meetings. And that's when I stopped. But how long did it last? Well, uh, kind of a long So I was kind of living with... So for the last six months of my drinking and using, man, I was I was absolutely mental. Like, I was off the walls. Like, there was no money. There was no anything. I was robbing everybody I could. Like, everybody I could, I was robbing my birds, my friends. I had no friends. I had nobody, but... Because mm-hmm. everything that I had a couple of years before was gone because I was absolutely fucking destroyed. Cocaine had completely taken over, like... I had nothing but I was living in my I was living in my 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 wife's mother's in her in her bed in in her house with with my with my wife I was giving my wife and my girlfriend at the time an absolutely dreadful life man you know what I mean I was a very abusive guy like you know what I mean I have no problem saying that no like I was a very dangerous scary guy and I suppose I scared her out of her mind to do what she was told kind of thing like you know what I mean like I was a fucking bully like you know and, and I I've no problem saying those things now like because I'm not that person anymore but back then man I was a fucking scumbag like and there's no point sugar going in like I was an absolute scumbag so I kind of went from her house to my mother's kind of couch but then from about three months before my mother and father kind of washed their hands of me because they was quite the house drunk fight my father you know abuse my sister's it was my mother. So then I kind of went back to my 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 partner at the time, mothers, and they washed their hands of me because I was doing the same in their house. And that was it. Then, but I ended up homeless, sleeping under a bridge inside Limerick, inside in town. Now, in fairness to my mother and father, my father was always the, the hard man, you know what I mean? And, and was always like, no, stop, stop doing, stop giving him the chance because it's just going to happen again and again and again. And my mother was always soft and was like, and would pay for me to stay in hotels and stuff, you know? So I got to give my mother credit. Like, she, my mother... Never turned her back on me, like, you know what I mean? But gave me tough love, which is what I needed. And if I didn't get it, Kieran, I wouldn't be in the position I'm in today. I wouldn't be clean and sober. I wouldn't have the life I have today if I didn't get that tough love back then from my mother, my father, and from my wife. You know what I mean? So my wife had left me, girlfriend at the time. Obviously, I didn't see my son, my other kids. I don't get on with their mom anyway. You know, mm. that's still to this day. So I didn't see them. So my mother, my father were giving me the tough love. So I just... I had um, I had nowhere to, I had nowhere to live, man. So I, I slept on the streets. You know what I mean? It was simple as that. I had no friends, and not because I didn't have friends because oh fuck them. I didn't have friends because I burnt down my bridges, man. Why would anyone want to be friends with me? I didn't. I was I was fucking scumbag. I would have robbed from them, like you know what I mean. I was. That's 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 how bad I had gotten, but you know it, it had gotten really really bad for me, man. And um, yeah, so fucking that was it, man. And towards the end of it, then but I, I you know, my friend Jason Duffy and Laura. Uh, Laura Quinlan and his wife after I tried to commit suicide they took me in for a couple of days um, when I tried to get my head around it man that was probably the dark that was that was the darkest time like and I've never ever spoke about this publicly ever I remember having this conversation with Stephen Sharp when I first started Raw and we had decided never to talk about it not because of anything wrong with it like it's just like I've no problem sharing my story with people but myself and Stephen I thought maybe I don't want people support me because oh well done he's just not like I want people I want we want people to support me because he's a boxer and he's doing well for himself you know and not because of giving a sob story because I had never tried to come across as one of those guys and I and I still never do you know um but 
Yeah, man, it was a very, very, very dark time. Those those three weeks, man, from the day I tried to commit suicide to the day I got into treatment was, it was the hardest three weeks of my life, man. Mm. It was the hardest three weeks of my life. It was... My girlfriend obviously wasn't talking to me. She left me, obviously. Um, I was living in my, on my friend's couch. You know, they had kids. I felt like I was overstaying my boundaries, which I more than likely was, but they didn't want to see me dead. Um, you know, I was capable of doing anything at that time. I just, I saw no way out, man. I saw no way out. It's like everything had gone. Everyone had left me. You know, I had not, I actually had nothing. For, you know, I was at rock bottom. Like, and I hit rock bottom plenty of times before, but I had always bounced back. But this was rock bottom, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I always see quotes like saying, oh, you hit four rock bottoms before you find your final one. But I hit many rock bottoms. And, you know, and loads of times I, I was down in the dumps, but I always found a way out. This time, I didn't see a way out, man. Uh, the only way I saw it was killing myself. Like, and it was fucking, it was a dark time, man. You know, it was, it was, oh, man, it was dark. Like, thinking back on it now, like, it was, it was a scary time, like, you know. Um, luckily enough, I started going to meetings. Um, a friend of mine was clean and sober a couple of years and he said, look, man, you know, it's time, it's time to, to admit that you're powerless over drugs and alcohol and, and ask for help. Like, and man, that was very hard for me, like to ask for help. Like, you know what I mean? Like, cause I was living this hard man image on my life and thinking I was this and that and a brand new hat and, you know, so asking for help and being vulnerable, man, was very fucking hard for me. Like, you know what I mean? And that, I still find that hard to this day, like that vulnerable thing, because, I've put away the bad guy and I've put away the thing like, but uh, you know, I'll always be that tough, tough guy like, you know what I mean? That that will fucking that will throw punches and talk later like, you know what I mean? I'll always be that guy like, you know, I'll always stick a head in someone if I think the head needs to be stuck in like, do you know, do you know what I'm saying like? So, but I started going to meetings, man. Um, my mother and my father got in contact with me about a week later and said, look, why don't I said, look, I'm trying to, I'm going to try and get into treatment. My mother got me in, my mother got me into treatment. My mother and father took me back in home to try and to keep me off the street, obviously, and to keep me keep me to keep me sane, really, like you know what I mean, to keep an eye on me. Like um but I, I started to find strength, man, in 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 and belief when I was going to the meetings, going to NA meetings, there were some great people in the meetings and listening to them share share about them being in the same position that I was in at that time. Because I thought no one else was in that position. I was like, no, this is only happening to me, like, you know what I mean? This is all about me, like that. But then when I heard guys and girls sharing about it, I was like, "Fuck, they, they've been in the same position." And then when I went to treatment, geez, that was tough. Treatment was tough, man. I went to treatment for a month. And I spent a good bit of time in prison, man. You know what I mean? And, and you know, no fucking not going to say what I did or whatever. Like, I was in prison a couple of sentences, three sentences in prison, and treatment was tougher than jail, man. And that's the truth because I had to look at who I was, like, and find out why I was doing the things I was doing, and and really go inside myself mentally, man. And I found that fucking that was the toughest thing I've ever done in my life, like, is finding out who I was and and attacking this guy, like, you know what I mean, to go inside my head, like. Um, but I'm very, very grateful that I was given the opportunity because I know many people now that are dead and gone because of because of addiction and because of alcoholism and because of that life, you know what I mean? And and that's what was out there for me, Karen. It was either go back to jail for a life sentence or death. That's there was no other option for me. There was that's that's where I was going. Either life in jail or death. That's that was that was what was there for me, man. Um so I started going to meetings, I went to treatment and I and I and I've never looked back, touch wood, since, you know. Um when when I got out of treatment me and my wife started talking again. Obviously, she came to see me in treatment and stuff. And we started talking again. And and we gave it a bit of time before we got back together to see, you know, I wanted to see who I was, Karen. And I had to find out what the fuck was going on with me, like why I was so fucking crazy for the last five years of previous of that life. Like, you know what I mean? So so on a journey to find out who I was, you know what I mean? Obviously, me and my wife found each other again. And, and the rest is history, man. I have the greatest life I could ever have today. Um... You know, my wife is a big part of that. Of course, my mother, my father, and my sisters, and you know, my friends, my good friends, and all. Like, I've 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 number gratitude for all those people to help me out, Cameron, because it was a very very dark time, man. And without asking for help that I needed, I'd be dead now. Mm-hmm. There's no response about it. I'd be dead now. You know, and and to the life I live today, man. I'm sitting in my kitchen, man. You know, I'm not trying to have a mansion, like, but this is my house. With my wife and my kids. You know, I have my gym out the back. I have my own job. You know, I have a boxing career. I have good friends, very, very good friends. I have my mother, my father, you know, my sister, you know, I have good people around me. 
I'm very, very grateful for life I have. And that's why every single day, like you see my Instagram, I'll share, you know, positive stuff. That's not for people to say, oh, look him thinks Mr. Motivator. It's for me to maybe share my inspiration with other people, you know what I mean? To, to show people that, you know, there is a better life out there, like, you know what I mean? And, and that's the truth. I, I'm proof of that, like, that there's a better life out there. Like I said, okay, and I can have days there, man, where I just want to blow my fucking head off. And that's the truth. But a bad day is not a bad life. I live a good life. And that's what's important to me, bro. It's interesting when you talk about the, the addiction, but you still, at this time in your life, you still have those battles in your head. Does this thing, like, I remember when I interviewed uh, Steve Sharp about his um, recovery, and he said, yeah, like, addiction, but, like, he said, you know, mental health, he said that people don't realise when people have, a lot of people become addicts or when they take drugs is, is because they're trying to deal with something very deep inside themselves. And, um there's this it's there's a stigma in addiction because people are homeless and whatnot you just think oh they're just you know they're just junkies and all that i'll never end up there or you know what i mean and yeah sharpie was saying like there's a person there so i mean they're trying to deal they're they're one of the most vulnerable people in the world they're trying to deal with something very very dark inside them and um like i have even friends who believe that oh well these good those guys taking taking drugs and all that they said they shouldn't be doing it because it leads to depression but i said no well most likely they're taking it because there's something very, very dark deep down and something that they're trying to cope with, even if it's only on a weekend or yeah. a day of the week like you. Um, do you find that as well? Like there's a big stigma in addiction and, and homelessness. Massive, man. Massive, you know, um, absolutely massive stigma in homelessness and addiction. And like me, myself, when you went into treatment, like one of the first questions you're asked is like, what's, your, what, what's an alcoholic? And like, because cause obviously I hadn't admitted I was an alcoholic or an addict yet. You know what I mean? So I was like, an alcoholic is the guy is fucking asleep in the lane, homeless because of his fucking choice, like not realizing that that homeless guy that's in the lane is the same guy as me and you and everybody else that has just not had his luck in life, you know what I mean? And and, and his battle or whatever's gone inside him. Like, I know what that battle is like. And like Stephen Sharp is another guy in recovery. I know he's talked about it openly with Shelf myself. Good, good, good chat about it, you know. Um, and and a, a, lot, a, a, lot, a lot of good of my friends, you know, my good friend Siobhan, who you know Siobhan, she works in, with, in homelessness, you know what I mean? And, and she she sees it, you know, you know, she's, she, she's, she's explained to me as well, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I've had these chats, like, where, See all these people put up things like, oh, fuck it, it's his choice and all like, but it's not, it's not your choice. Like people said that to me when I was like, you chose that. Like, I didn't choose this, man. I didn't choose to be an addict. I didn't wake up in the morning and go, yeah, I want to be an addict. I want to have mental health problems every day of my life for the rest of my life because that's what it is like. It's every single day for the rest of your life. Like, not like when you get clean and sober, it stops because that's when the battle starts. Because mm-hmm. when you're drinking and using, you can just turn to a bottle of vodka and turn to a bag of stuff and say, Yeah, I'm fine. You know what I mean? Mm. You know, I'm fine. Like, I can deal with that. Whereas now, like, you have to deal with the, with the problems in life without alcohol or drugs, without your crutch. You know what I mean? And without that, like, and so for those homeless guys and for those addicts who, and a lot of addicts who I know and are very close to me, you know, I, I know the battle they're going through and I feel for those guys. I, I, I feel, of course I feel for those people. Like, you know what I mean? It, it's a fucking, it's, it's a very, very tough, tough situation to be in. I would never look down on anybody, Kieran. Anybody, no matter what situation they're in, I would never look down on anybody because I've been in that situation. You know what I mean? And, and I'm not, I don't judge people who look down on people. I don't judge people who don't. It's none of my business what people do or don't do. But I, me personally, will never look down on anybody because I've been that guy. You know what I mean? And, and I know how hard it is. And I know the battle that those people are, are dealing with on a daily basis because I'm still dealing with that battle today. Like every single day. Like, like, some, like, like I've said to you a couple of times, like, this never goes away, man. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, this never goes away. Like, this is an incurable disease. Like, addiction is a disease and it never goes away. Like, my wife will tell you there, man, if you ever chat to her, like, there's days where my wife looks at me and thinks, who are you today? Like, where I'm just a fucking depression case or I'm angry or I'm, you know, and it's just my mental health taking over, man. And fucking, it doesn't happen often, but it happens, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because in the morning, I do my routine. I'd meditate. I, I pray every single day. You know what I mean? I, I, I do a lot of stuff to keep my mind calm, you know, on top of me being an addict, I have ADHD, so my mind is always running, man, you know, 
So, man, like, I feel for every addict out there. I feel for every homeless person out there. I feel for anybody, anybody out there, whether an addict, homeless, struggling with anything, OCD, you know, eating disorders, sex disorders, whatever it is, man. I know what it's like. It's tough. It's a tough, tough battle. You know what I mean? And, and fair play to everybody fighting it. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's tough. They're the, they're the real fighters, man, is the people that are fighting battles that nobody knows about. The people that are showing up every single day, um, you know, to work or to a family or to a life that, that and dragging himself out of the bed and trying not to kill himself on a daily basis. Like, you know what I mean? They are the real fighters in life. And, and that's where my respect is. Like, I have respect for those people. Man. Mm. I think, would you say, is because you're someone, because now the situation you're in and you don't have these voices to, to kind of numb down and cope with certain things inside, you're constantly mm. having to confront your through consciousness you're trying to you're con constantly having to confront your subconscious uh from your conscious. Mm. every day is that you're constantly challenging your subconscious consciously walking yeah. but i i learned early on in recovery man and i surround myself with good people i suppose but i got god in my life no i'm not i'm not religious and i always say this i'm not religious but i'm very very spiritual and again like i don't i don't poster all over social media I, I put up some some motivational quotes and, and if i'm ever asked i will always give honest advice but man i listen to a lot of motivation speaking i do a lot of meditation and that keeps me grounded man that keeps me focused that keeps me that keeps that battle at at an even weight you know what i mean it keeps me 50 50 you know what i mean because that's the battle i have every day is a 50 50 battle am i going to come out on top or is the bad motherfucker going to come out on top and am i going to be an angry fucking spiteful cunt for the day to everybody around me or am I going to be the nice ground you know what I mean unfortunately man that's the way it is for me like this is no sugar cunt. like I'm 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 either really good or I'm really bad as like I suppose with me, you could you can tell that with, with how I put on weight so easily outside the, outside the camp man because I just run to the I run to the food after the fight I'm like bum, 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 bum. you know let's let's fucking let's 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 just forget everything. Eat myself into an oblivion and turn on storm for two days and boom, then I'm 10 kilos heavier. That's also a thing with my addiction. You know what I mean? That's also a thing with my head. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm going to absolutely eat myself into, into a coma here and that's going, that, that's another form of escape, man. That's, that's one thing I've never really gotten quite down yet. Why did I put that? Something I've been working on for the last few months. You know what I mean? That's something I'm working on for the last year really like I, i've kind of only approached that really in the last year my, my kind of the inside of it but again it's it's all trapped down to to my head man you know what i mean and 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 like you said that that battle that subconscious battle because we don't know what goes into us subconsciously you know i do my best not to surround myself with any negativity like i said Joel, but i'm not on twitter i don't go on twitter because it is nothing but negative i don't surround any and it and <clears throat> one thing i'd say is if i get a negative vibe from somebody i'm done and I, I don't hold grudges with anybody, man. You know, I don't hold grudges. But if I get negativity and I get and I get that bad vibe, I'm done. You know what I mean? I'm out of there. Like, and, I, and that's it. I, I would never talk to you again. Like, in that kind of sense, like, that's the kind of person I am. Like, I'm not having that stuff around my life. I'm not having that stuff around my, my family. I'm not having that stuff wrecking up, wrecking everything I've offered. Because what people don't realize, Kian, like, is you only need to be around negative people for a small time. And that shit gets in your head. That's the truth. That shit gets in your head. So if, if I sense negativity or disloyalty or anything like that, man, I'm just going to pull myself away from that. Mm. I'm going to pull myself away from that because I, that, that, that would be me grabbing onto that and going, all right, now we have ground. Like, you know what I mean? Now we have you. We're going to pull you back to the old you. We're going to pull you back. And eventually, man, who knows? I could, you know, you just don't know what happens then, man, you know? So, mm -hmm. you know, I do my best to avoid negativity as much as I can. Yeah, and, and like, especially when someone's like that, when you're around them all the time, the, you're seeing their confirmation bias all day. The person trying to confirm their bias opinion of everything, and then that gets into your head, and then you and justify how they're justify what they're doing, and justify how what they're doing, and you're like, mm, okay, I don't know. Yeah, and then you yeah, so. justifying why you can start using the gun or doing this or this or taking short exactly. No, it's never, it's never been, it's never been. I've never really strongly, maybe once or twice over the last five years about drinking drugs, but I've. Lots of times, strongly thought about going back to my life 
making extra money selling drugs. I don't take drugs anymore. That's because I'm, I don't take drugs anymore. I can make a fortune selling drugs again now. That's what goes through my head, but you know what I mean? But what would come with that is jail, guards, and what would come with that, alcohol, drugs. That, it, it, it's a vicious, vicious circle, man. And it, it will always go around and it, it will bite you. If you don't mind yourself, if you don't watch yourself, it will get you. You know what I mean? It's, it never stops, but it never stops. You know what I mean? So I have to be careful of that. I have to mind myself and mind my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why I need the training. That's why, I'm, that's why I'm back boxing. That's why I need this in my life. Like I said to you, man, I find freedom in pain, man. And I, and I know that sounds a bit crazy and a bit harsh, but I get a lot of freedom out of cutting 10 kilos in five weeks. I get a lot of freedom out of getting punched. I get a lot of freedom from pain, man. This is, the, you know, I feel free when I'm doing something, when I'm taking a risk, when I'm, when I'm pushing myself. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm back boxing, man. You know, am I, did I ever, ever come across and say, oh, I'm this superstar, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm the best boxer, I've won this, I've won that. Never. I never said that. You can go back and ask Stephen Sharp or Leonard Gunn, and I never said that. I said, I'm tough, I'm strong, I want to fight, and I want to I wanna, I wanna challenge myself. That's all I ever said, and I still say that after this day. Anyone that gets in the ring with me, know that I will fight to the day. Like, you know what I mean? I will fight until, until I cannot fight anymore. You know what I mean? Knock me down nine, I will get up ten. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm back fighting. That's why I'm going to America. That's why I'm going to take over, baby. Woo! <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's. Uh, I think I think that's really we, we covered loads there. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that chat, Graham, and uh, I appreciate you opening up to me yeah, today, uh, about everything because I know it's not something you usually do, and I can imagine it's it's tough for no, you. That, 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 that's my first time ever. That's my first time ever admitting publicly that I'm an addict, ever. I've never, ever come across, I've never, ever said it publicly. I've never done anything like that. So I've been asked a lot of times, but it's just not my thing. I, I, I never wanted to play the violin. I never wanted for the sob story, and I'm never going to have it. This is the first time I talk about it, and probably be the last time for a while. But I'm glad we got to have the conversation. I'm glad we, we had a good chat, and I hope it can help someone, man. I hope someone watches this, that maybe is in a tough situation in life, and know that there is always a better way out there. Mm. Uh, yeah, and I, I thought it would, it would be interesting as well to speak about because in the current situation that, that we're in, it, it's very yeah. good for people to fall in that path. So um, I really appreciate it because I know once it's out there, it's out there. So I really appreciate that you've you've given the time and opened up uh, about it. Yeah. So yeah, um, thanks very much, Graham. And uh, hopefully, now, now there's no confirmation, but hopefully there'll be a stream for your fight. Which will be up on your page, my page. Um, if there is, yeah. a If not, I'm sure you, you'll get. We'll some pay, if not, we'll pay some American to hold the camera and the phone yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and get out of point. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. And then, uh, yeah, uh, and speak to you after your fight. So, yeah, best of luck. Cool. Thanks, Kieran. I'll chat to you soon, bro. Thanks very much.